to Commercial Break, the only show that brings you all your favorite faces from commercials. My name is Rebecca Michael, and I am your host tonight, and we have a wonderful show planned for you with a fabulous guest. But before we get to her, there's something I want to talk to Mike about that's driving me crazy. I can't get this ad out of my head. But what's hilarious is in the campaign, it's people break dancing, doing the robot and all kinds of weird stuff. They have tons of spots though. They spent like $10 million on their ad campaign. And um, it, they do like the iRobot spots as well where the actors say iRobot over and over and over again. And there's this one that's kind of scary where at the end, there's this European woman with a thick accent who's like, iRobot, do you? Okay guys, when we come back, I'm going to introduce our awesome guest tonight. She's a mystery guest, but she has over 10 million views on YouTube, so stick around. You don't want to miss meeting her. We'll be back. Tonight we have an amazing guest, um, the lovely, talented actress Marielle Booth is with us tonight. Welcome, Marielle. Hi, thank you so much. You were in a really cute New Balance commercial yeah. where you wore like high-toning shoes. So tell me the underlying story behind this ad. Like, what's like the premise of what the director was trying to do with the three actors? Well, um, basically, there's me and this other girl, and we are, you know, jogging in the park. And uh, there's a hottie that walks by that I'm trying to catch his eye, but instead of looking at me, he looks at her. So I get a little bit miffed at the end. And he, you thought he was noticing you at the beginning, but he's yeah. really noticing my shoes. Your shoes. <laughs> they were like the ugliest shoes on the face of the planet. They were uh, sent off on uh, the sketcher shoes, so they were actually built specifically for the commercial. They were like really tall platform, like heinously ugly, like silver shoes um, that made me walk really like in this really goofy, weird goofy gait. way. Yeah. And she's wearing normal <laughs> shoes, so he's like focused on your shoes, and then yeah. he's looking at her shoes. Yeah. And yeah, it, it must have been a long day shooting that because. That he, he would have to get all those shots of the feet and the shoes mm -hmm. and everyone coordinated correctly and you're walking by shots. each other. <laughs> yeah, the butt shots yeah. are very important in a sneaker commercial. Totally. Yeah, I have noticed sneaker commercials are all about like the girls' bodies and butt shots. True. It's well, so these funny. are these were like butt blasting shoes, so they were you know specifically targeting. There were a lot of sort of close up leg booty yeah. shots. That's so funny. <laughs> but what you're really known for in commercials is your State Farm ad, State of Disbelief, where you play a delusional yeah. character who seems yeah. like she's a little out of touch with reality. So totally let's out of take touch. a look at that clip. <laughs> I met him on the internet. He's a French model. Uh, bonjour. How true is that character to who you really are? Oh my god, it's so completely opposite <laughs> of who I am, I can't even tell you. But there is nothing more fun than playing a dumb blonde. Honestly, I feel like that's really all I ever get booked for, and I guess it's like my thing, because I'm good at being really ditzy, but I mean, it's fun. I love it. I so was this ad it. shot like right in, in the streets of New York, or some, a set that was made to look like that? Because it literally looks like you're in front of Carrie Bradshaw's like brownstone in yeah. New York City or something. Um, we actually shot in Fort Greene, Brooklyn, um, and so it was, you know, it was in New York, but oh, cool. it was, I think Carrie lived on the Upper East Side, so it was a little yeah. bit more, you know, ritzy than where we were, but exactly. it was a good day and it wasn't very busy, which is good. Based on the look, did you do that look in the audition? You know, it's so funny, everyone asked me about that look, but I actually didn't know that I was doing that look. I just, like, it just sort of came out of nowhere, and uh, so I was surprised when I saw it myself, but I think in the actual audition, um, I was actually doing a different spot, and it was just as funny, uh, but uh, I think that it just worked out really well. I don't yeah, because I think that look, like you, it's just pure comedy. To be honest, like, I think I did do that look because there was a moment in the audition in the callback where I had to walk off screen and kind of look back at this girl that was actually I was doing it with, and uh, kind of look at her like, you know, yeah, okay, you're yeah, crazy. you know what I mean. And I think it was something like that. So. It w it really worked. Um, but I have to say, one of the best pieces of work I've seen you do is another. I love the State Farm thing. But you did a sketch with the Britannic guys yeah. on YouTube called Sexy Pool Party, mm. um, which has like almost 10 million views. I checked it the other day. It's literally peaking to 10. Yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. So uh, why aren't there any girls at this party? Because have you met us? We're terrible. What are you doing to Fifi? Just a little trick Brad showed me. That Greek guy? Dude, he's Cyprian. Wow! What? Woof. Fifi, come here, girl. <laughs> I don't know about this. For you. Tonight, I'm gonna poo in your shoes. 
It's perfect. Um, I had so much fun that day. Hide your shoes, people, when Mario's around, because you never know what she's going to do. Yeah. If you want to see the rest of that sketch, you have to go to Britannic's uh, YouTube page, and uh, just or you can Google Sexy Pool Party. It'll come right up. Uh, we didn't have time to play the whole clip. But um, also, Nathan Fillion appears in that sketch at the end of the sketch. So that's really nice. Um, your comedic timing in this is perfect. You play a Thank dog. You. How did you prepare for that? I uh, mean, I'm a dog lover. I've always been such a big fan, and I know I, I just thought about like how a dog would actually jump in a pool because they yeah. kind of like hesitate for a second, and then they just like launch. <laughs> but the launch is never really very graceful. So yeah. I just went for it. It was like the first take. I did a belly flop, like, and they were they were like, wow, you, you were, like, really really went for that, didn't you? You nailed the jump. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thank That's you. That's exactly what a dog I would tried. do. I just wanted to really be like really like dog like. How so. did they find you for this? Um, actually, it was through a friend of a friend, uh, another uh, writer, uh, comedy writer, a friend of mine um, knows these guys and uh, knew they were looking for someone in LA and um, and hooked us up. So. And Mario, I wanted to ask you, where did you get your start in like show business in front of the camera? I actually started. I did a lot of theater when I was a kid, um, but then I ended up starting modeling when I was 14. And then I graduated high school a year early when I was 17, started traveling all over the world doing that. Um, and then I settled in New York and I started doing commercials about seven years ago. And it's actually just my favorite thing to do. I really enjoy it and um, it's the reason I moved out to LA. So Mike, it's that time where it's Mike's questions from the digital universe. Uh, Rebecca, uh, first I want to tell Mariel that our fans watching and, and uh, they're commenting on Twitter and on our Facebook page, uh, they love all your commercials. I think you're Great. very funny and fantastic. We do have a ton of questions. Okay. Um, the first one, you know, based on that, what happened in the State Farm episode, uh, original Nixter wants to know, have you ever fallen for an internet scam? Oh, have I fallen for an internet scam? Yes, I almost uh, fell for a scam on Craigslist where I uh, found a really amazing deal on an apartment in New York and then realized that this guy was trying to scam me from Africa. Um, <laughs> he, was, uh, he said he was a priest and I fell for it and he was, I don't know, he wanted me to like send him a money gram and it was like, I fell for it for about a half a day before because I Because you were in New York and you wanted a good apartment. I was like $700 and you were for one bedroom in the East Village? Are you kidding me? This is amazing. I was like, you I didn't wanted want to it, believe it was I true. I wanted it to be true yeah. so badly that when people were like, are you insane? Like, this is obviously a scam. I was like, no. Yeah. So, you know. I think we've all gotten that one via yeah. email. Yeah. Um, uh, we talked a little bit about uh, uh, your experience in the industry at various levels. Mm -hmm. uh, Senor Shutter wants to know what your first paying gig was. Um, my first ever paying gig was when I was 14, I did the cover of Baltimore Magazine. It was like a local, I'm from the D.C. area, so that was my first paid gig. Oh, that's so cool. Nice. Yeah. Mike, one more. Yeah, uh, it's a good one to go out on. Uh, Schmo's intern wants to know, with all of this work you've done, do people recognize you out in the street? Uh, um, I've noticed that since State Farm uh, has been running for so long now that I do get recognized um, fairly regularly, actually. Now it's kind of fun, but I feel like people are always so happy because they love it. So they're like, oh my god, every time I see that, I'm laughing, and it just makes me, you know, makes me feel good. So. Yeah. Time for Jingle Jangle. So Jingle Jangle is a segment where we ask our guest, what's your favorite jingle from all time? Like the first thing you would think of. Mario? Well, the first uh, jingle that came to mind was Kit Kat, I have to be honest. I mean, I grew up in the 90s, so. Oh, yeah. The Kit Kat. They have like a really catchy song. Yeah. How did it go again? Um, it I'm a terrible singer, but I will regale you with my <laughs> voice. All right. Give me a break. Give, Give me a break. Break, break me off a piece of that, that Kit Kat bar. <laughs> totally remember that. I, now I want one. Yeah, right? I know they're so this good. This is advertising at its best. It's in the noggin. Do you have like a specific way that you eat Kit Kats? Because I do. Oh, you do? I don't. Tell I, me. I just nibble the sides down and all the chocolate off the sides. Then I break the wafers off into like little pieces. Would you, would you like us to get a counselor in here to discuss what? What, what does this mean about me? I don't know. I, maybe I'm frustrated Like the people who cut the crust off their sandwiches. Mike, do you remember the Kit Kat jingle? I do, and my preferred way to eat the Kit Kat is oh, you uh, one? frozen. Oh, so this is a thing. Yeah. I didn't even know this was. Frozen thought, Kit Kats are good. I they just are. thought people were like this about Oreo cookies. I didn't realize there were different ways to eat candy bars. Well, I'm always the last one to know. <laughs> if only we had some Kit Kats. Oh. No, we have a Kit Kat <laughs> in the house? This is TV at its best. Hand it over, hand it over. Yay. Here you go, Mario. Does this mean oh, that, oh, 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 sorry. Mike? <laughs> yes. 
I do not play for the Angels. <laughs> uh, Los Angeles Angels. Let's see. Angels. Now, you're, now I'm going to have to do my Kit Kat nibble. Oh, well, you know. Uh, Rebecca, this Kit Kat is not frozen. Let me show you. Hey, <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Sorry, Mike. Let me talk to, you know, somebody about that and get that taken care of. You know, guys, this is how I eat a Kit Kat. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's just normal. Mm. I'm the normal one here. Yum. Mm, it is really good. I haven't mm -hmm. had one of these in a while. I always buy Reese's. <laughs> Before we go, um, anything coming up? Well, um, I did like a little scene for a, a thing on HBO that's coming out in, this, in the fall. I can't really talk about it yet. Um, and then I am doing this Head & Shoulders commercial with C.J. Wilson of the uh, LA, LA Angels. Oh, awesome. Well, we'll <laughs> and, have to look uh, for that. Yeah, that'll be out uh, sometime this summer. And, uh, and then this benefit campaign. So Cool. And give good. us your website and your Twitter. Yeah, my website is easy. It's marielbooth.com, www.marielbooth.com. And then my Twitter is at mariel underscore booth. So oh. all lowercase. Awesome. Well, everyone check that out. Well, thank you so much, Mariel. Thank you, you so much, Rebecca. You were an awesome guest to be here with us tonight. We enjoyed it so much. We had a great time with you. You're so talented. You oh, look like a young you. Goldie Hawn. I'm sure, like, the sky's the limit for you. Well, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Let's go ahead and take a look at Before They Were Famous. Mike, Howdy. Mike. Yeah, uh, Rebecca, clearly that's a young Will Smith. You know what's great about this commercial? You guys should check it out on YouTube if you can look it up. Um, at the beginning, there's a voiceover, and it's totally Brad. Because you know when someone's super famous, you know their voice so well? He's like, aw, no more Pringles. <laughs> at the beginning of the ad, it's so funny. And the guy who directed it is Lawrence Bridges, Larry Bridges. And he was a big 80s commercial director. And apparently, like, he was the anti-commercial guy, like, because he used crazy camera angles. And... I guess he paved the way for like shaky camera, which is like something that took off after that. And he sort of went the other way away from traditional advertising. So, you know, that, he, that commercial, Rebecca, is clearly a cry for help because Brad Pitt <laughs> is basically carjacking those poor girls. Clearly. And then a few years later, he would rob Thelma and Louise, and then he would uh, pair up with George Clooney and rob Vegas casinos. Brad Pitt needs to be stopped. Before we leave you guys, we have a blog, commercialbreaktv.com. Mike's putting all kinds of articles up there that are funny. We also have a Facebook, like us there, Commercial Break TV Show. Um, check us out there, and um, our Twitter is Commercial TV. Make sure you check out Britannic's YouTube page, and thank you so much for being with us, and have a great day.